Hi everybody and welcome to Professional Beauty and Hairdressers Journal Ireland's latest webinar for this week. Um, and this week we are talking to Peter McGuinness, who is the Managing Director of Cocoon Medical. Uh, welcome Peter, thank you for joining us. Hi, thanks Gwen. And uh, the topic that we picked uh, to, talk about, to talk with Peter about is laser hair removal. And we're going to talk, or at least Peter's going to talk and explain to us uh, how new technology uh, can help to grow your business. So will we, I'll just, I'm going to go ahead, Peter, I know you've got a lot of stuff prepared to explain to us, so we'll mm -hmm. just start off with, um, you can explain to me a little bit about the history and the science of laser hair removal. Yeah, sure. And I'll, I'll present a few slides as well, because I find it's easier Great. just visually to, you know, look at the information. And uh, I've been involved in, in the laser business for over 20 years now, really from day one when it arrived from the US in, into the UK and in Ireland. Um, so I've seen a lot, lot come and go and it's changed a lot, and particularly in the last five years, things have progressed significantly. Uh, one thing I do find is when I speak to salons around the country, the you know, main thing they say is, yeah, you know, we wanted to get into laser. We looked at it a few years ago. It was very, either very expensive or... We went to a trade show and we talked to 10 different manufacturers and they all said they got the best technology and we left more confused than when we got there. So hopefully today we, I can uh, give you a little more insight and information to provide uh, people uh, with, with the knowledge that they can make you know, the, the right decision for, for their business. Um, but in terms of understanding of what a laser is and, and how laser hair removal works, uh, we look at uh, the, the, uh, the, the go back to your physics class in school and understanding the um, spectrum of light and how lasers are are generated um, and that's looking what we call our core of knowledge which is the, the basic understanding of the the physics of it and one of the main things to look at is the, the full spectrum of light so this is you know contains a wide range of uh, wavelets from gamma rays, x-rays on one end to radio waves on the other and in the middle you've got this little sliver that we call the visible light spectrum and that's the spectrum of light that we can actually see because each uh, wavelet has got a different color and colors of the rainbow is one example of that and it's only in this visible end of the spectrum that we operate within the aesthetic market and this is the very safe end of the spectrum so there's no uv there's no x-rays no gamma rays it can't do any harm so the first thing is it's very very safe um, within that spectrum, uh, the, the, you, you, you can see the different colors have got different wavelengths from like 400, 500, 600, and 700 nanometers. That's the measurement that they're in. Uh, we look at shortly as to which is the best wavelength to, to use. But basically, how, all a laser is, and it's very simple, it's an acronym for light amplification stimulated emission of radiation, which is a bit of a mouthful. But very simply, uh, you take a light source, which is, you know, just white light and you uh, send it into a medium in this case it's a crystal a block of crystal of neodymium yag or you could have a ruby or an alexandrite crystal but each particular uh, medium or crystal or it could be a gas uh, will result in a particular single wavelength of light being emitted but once you send the, the light into the, the crystal it bounces the photons of light back and forth back and forth until it gets amplified and then it stimulates the emission of radiation out this little window. And that comes out in, in a single wavelength of light uh, that is quite, that is, is, has a number of properties. One being it's a single color and a single wavelength or monochromatic. Whereas IPL on the other hand is not monochromatic. It contains a wide range of different wavelengths. It's also polarized. So it's going in a single direction. It doesn't diverge. It's a collimated beam. Uh, and it tends to be high powered compared to, uh, to, to LEDs, for example. Um, you can have different types of lasers, and this is what causes people some confusion because, well, I don't know, should I? They say, he says, an Alexandra is great. They say, the AG is great. Um, but there are five different types. The solid state ones are ones that use those crystals as a, as a medium, and you could choose an Alexandrite, will give you a 755 nanometer wavelength or a neodymium or ND YAG gives you 1064 nanometers or Ruby gives you 694. The uh, latest technology in the market are the semi semiconductor diodes and they can give you, you can choose which wavelength you want. So they're a little bit more versatile. And, or you could, you could have a liquid like a chemical dye. If you put electricity into that, it will emit a specific wavelength. 
often 585. Uh, or you can have gas ones like CO2 lasers that give much, much higher wavelengths in over 10,000 nanometers. So there's different ones you can do. So the first point is, you know, well, which one would you use? And that really depends on what you're targeting within the skin. So you can see here on the left, uh, you've got the different wavelengths of laser light. And as you go higher up on the wavelengths, they go deeper into the skin. So if you're looking at using like a 400, 400 to 500 nanometer wavelength, it doesn't go very deep into the skin. For hair removal, you need a wavelength that will go down to the deepest, the base of the deepest follicle within the skin. Uh, so that tends to be in the 670 to 1100 nanometers is where we operate. On the other uh, uh, graph here, you can see, or if I just skip to the next slide, you can see that as the laser light goes down into the hair follicle, the hair follicle is surrounded by a dark pigment called melanin. A dark pigment attracts light greater than uh, a lighter pigment. So we can use that melanin pigment to conduct the heat of the laser all the way down here to the base of the follicle, heats up that follicle, cuts off the blood flow and the hair dyes. So in, de in determining what's the best wavelength to use, you want to get the one with the highest absorption in melanin, but you also need to get the deepest penetration, deep enough to get the deepest hair follicle. So it's got that kind of a trade-off. And that optimal level comes around a 755 to 800 nanometers because it's got high, relatively high melanin absorption compared to right here. <clears throat> Whereas you couldn't use wavelets, you might say, well, why don't you use one up here to get a very high absorption? Uh, out there, it doesn't go very deep, so you're not going to get down to the follicle. So 755 to 810 are kind of known as the gold standard. The other one you do hear in the market is the ND YAG, which does go very deep down there, but it's not very absorbent in melanin, so it's not, not optimal. Okay, So in terms of choosing the right wavelength is one very important part, because you want to get the maximum absorption in down to the hair follicle to destroy that hair. and the, the, the number one goal is to heat the base of the follicle 70 degrees because at that point it cuts off the blood flow, denatures the protein in the follicle and that hair will not regrow. Okay. The, uh, another question people will ask is, well, you know, how many treatments do you need? And you need a course of treatment because at any one point, only 30% of the hair is in the growing stage or the antigen stage. And that's the point at which you can destroy the hair. You can't if it's not, if it's disconnected or in the early stages or latter stages. So with each treatment, you can treat 30% of the hair. So you do need multiple treatments. And there are, in, in looking to what is the, the, the kind of qualities you want to find in a laser, there are basically four things. You need power. So you need sufficient power because you've got to deliver that energy deep down into the skin. And our belief is that you need a minimum of about 1800 watts when you're talking about a dye of laser. You can see here our lasers are from 2000 up to 4800, which is the highest uh, power device on the market. There are a lot of uh, Chinese manufacturers. They tend to be about 500 to 1200 watts. You've got uh, very popular lasers like the Soprano or the Lightyear, 2400 watts, just to give you an, an idea uh, of, of power. Um, wavelength we looked at, so 755 to 810 is kind of the gold standard because you get the maximum absorption in melanin. Uh, 1064 is often used. It's got less absorption in melanin, but it's safe for dark skin types. So if you're just treating dark skin types, it's a, it can be a pretty good wavelength to use as well. Um, the third point is, is what we call pulse duration. Very simply, all this is, is how fast does the laser deliver each pulse to the skin? And it's probably the most important factor because the faster you can deliver each pulse, the better the result, particularly on lighter and finer hairs, which have less melanin. So you want to deliver that get that shock effect of delivering the power down into the follicle. To achieve a short pulse duration though, you need a lot of power. And that's why only the high powered lasers on the market can achieve a short pulse duration and give you the best results. Um, low powered or cheaper lasers on the market will typically be 30 to 100 milliseconds compared to the high powered ones, which are like three to 400. And that's a fun, quite an important difference that, that you need to look at. Obviously, you're delivering high power in, uh, laser into the skin, you know, there's a potential of burning the skin unless you have very, very good cooling to protect it. So you need to protect the skin by cooling the surface of the skin, minimizes the side effects, avoids any burns or pigmentation. Our cooling system is a contact cooling, so it stays at five degrees throughout. 
So the surface of the skin never eats up, but all the energy can get down to the follicle where you want it. Um, this it just very simply gives you a, a comparison of a short pulse duration. So a laser that is delivered very, very quickly at the same energy level, 20 joules, compared to one at 20 joules, it's a much slower delivery of the laser. And you can see the impact on the base of the follicle. With a short pulse duration, you can get 70 degrees temperature. With a long pulse uh, or a low power device, you can, uh, you can only achieve 50, which is not enough to destroy the follicle. It will only damage it. Um, and here you can see the cooling in operation. So you're cooling the surface of the skin while all the energy is, is getting down to, to the base of the follicle. Uh, finally, just on, on, on that, well, that, that kind of comes to the end of, of the science. So hopefully it gives you a quick snapshot of uh, what you need to look for in technology because it is very confusing out there. So if you just be guided by the four points when you look at, you might go for a high power, high quality device that's got the best wavelength, uh, can deliver a very short pulse duration, it's got very efficient inbuilt cooling, uh, that will give you the results that you need to, to build a successful business. Great. Um, that's very interesting, actually. A lot of that stuff I didn't know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, and I wanted you to talk me through understanding the practicality of it. Okay. Um, so the, the treatment itself is, is with a good machine, because you know, in the last few years, the technology has really developed. They've become more powerful. Uh, they become much more effective and the cooling has improved significantly. So it's much, much safer and uh, they've built in safety mechanisms within the technology. Uh, I remember like you know, 10 years ago that the, the technology was still pretty raw and you could get burns and pigmentation and it got a you know, pretty bad name. And even still there are some machines on the market that, that haven't developed that level. But uh, the first thing you've got to do is you've got to select your skin type and uh, most Good lasers now will it will should be able to treat all skin types and you can see the skin type is it's on the fitzpatrick skin type scale goes from one to six from very very fair in other words you know if you always burn and never tan you have skin type one often blonde hair blue eyes red hair skin type two usually burns sometimes tans typical celtic skin three is more mediterranean four would be a light asian dark asian and an african so that's the first thing you need to establish because with darker skin types, you've got a lot more melanin. So that's going to compete for the energy from the laser with the melanin around the follicle. So ideally what you want is somebody with light skin with, uh, um, with, with dark hair, because then all that energy is going to be absorbed in the dark pigment around the follicle. Whereas with darker skin types, they, uh, the skin surrounding the area will, will absorb the light as well. And, and that can, uh, can lead to side effects if you're not careful. So selecting the skin type is important. Um, the, the kind of common questions that people will ask, you know, is it painful? And here I'm talking about our, our products in, in particular. Um, the treatment itself is not painful, but you, you should feel some sensation. We call it the needling effect. If it's painful, you're, you're, you know, that's a sign that you're over treating and turn down the energy. Um, is laser hair removal permanent? Um, it's fair to say that the hairs that we, if you've got a laser that can heat the base of the follicle up to 70 degrees, not all lasers can, that hair will not regrow. It physically can't because you've destroyed all the cells, including the germ cells. So it's fair to say that those hairs have been removed permanently. However, as I said, we can only treat growing hairs and that at any one point in time, only 30% of the hairs in our skin are growing. The rest are dormant or waiting to, to grow out. So we can only treat 30% with these treatments. We need multiple treatments, but, but the ones that we do treat won't grow back. If, if we've used the correct parameters. Uh, treatments, um, most people achieve maximum results in six sessions. By maximum results, we have an expectation of 85 to 95% clearance. So we never say 100%. You've got to set realistic expectations, but the remaining 10% or so you can't, you hardly can't even see. Some people do need one or two more treatments and then other people with hormonal conditions like polycystic ovaries potentially will need maintenance and ongoing treatment because their condition is producing new hair all the time. Um, how much does it cost? We look at this a little later when it comes to pricing because that's an important commercial aspect of it. Um, how does it work? You, know, you need to have a like a 30 second concise answer to that. So the laser is conducted down the follicle 
by the melanin, the dark pigment, to heat up the base of the follicle to 70 degrees, cuts off the blood flow, the hair dies, and it doesn't grow back. Um, what areas can be, we can treat all areas of the skin, and is it suitable for all skin types and hair types? So not all lasers can do all hair types for ex or, or skin types. For example, the Alexandrite laser is very effective in treating skin types one, two, three, possibly four, but not five and six. Uh, whereas at the end of YAG is safe to treat darker skin types, um, but not as effective as other lasers on lighter skin types. So we tend to, with our technology uh, using diode laser, we use the 810, which kind of gives you the best of both worlds. You can treat all skin types and uh, very, very effective because you've still got the high melanin absorption within there. So the, the treatment plans, uh, typically you would start off with these intervals. So if you're treating the face, because it can be more hormonal lead growth, it's four weeks between each treatment. Um, but as you can see down here, time between treatments increases with each treatment. So as you go, if you go start off from treatment one to two, it might be four weeks on the face. When you get to treatment five to six, it could be seven weeks. So that time expands as you go through the program. Whereas if you're talking larger areas on the body, you'll start off eight to 10 weeks between each treatment. Um, with diet technology, you get two modes of operation. You get a static, which is delivering single pulses of energy into the skin. And that can be at a rate of one pulse per second, two pulses per second, or the super fast three pulses per second. You should avoid sun exposure. Um, uh, or you can have a dynamic mode, which delivers a high volume of low energy pulses and it accumulates heat in the skin. So it slowly increases the heat within the follicle without increasing the skin. And with that mode, you can treat tan skin. Uh, here you can see on, on the, our Elysian device, the, you just very simply input, choose your skin type on the top, and then you choose your speed, one, two, or three pulses per second, and you input your energy. That's it. Everything else is automatic. You press pray, and then you're ready to go. And here's an example of a patch test treatment. So when people start the courses, we always do a patch test just to make sure that they're suitable, they're not photosensitive and also allows us to calculate what's the optimum energy to get the best results from that. So you can see inputting the energy, taking up the handpiece, direct contact on the skin, firing one pulse, take it away, increase the energy a little bit more so we start to see how the skin reacts. And we want to get to an end point where you get a little bit of redness on the skin and the client can feel a sensation, okay? Not pain, but they'll feel a sensation. That's pretty simple, doesn't take very long. You'd always do that before they start the course of treatment and it gives you your settings. Here's an example of an upper lip treatment. So we place a little bit of gel just so that the waveguide, because it's in contact with the skin, can slide along. And with this, you can see, because it's a large spot size or tip, in three, four pulses, you've done an upper lip. You know, it takes less than a minute. And later on, when you look at the commercial side of things, treatment time is very important. Uh, here you can see a slightly larger area. So that, the public, that was at one pulse per second. Now we'll look at the underarms at two pulses per second. So you map out the area with a little white pen so you can see where you're treating. You always shave the hair from the surface of the skin because you don't want that, uh, the laser burning that and causing mm -hmm. discomfort or cat scratches. I'll apply a light amount of gel just so you can glide over the area. and then you apply the laser. So with two pulses per second, you're gonna remain in contact with the skin and you're just gonna slowly slide it across and the laser will continue to pulse throughout that treatment. Client won't feel any discomfort at all. They just lie, lie back relaxed. So you can see it's sliding along the skin. Okay. And you just do it in, in lines. And then you can move to the just the final third video, which shows you the super fast treatment. And you can see an underarm is done very, very quickly. Here you can see a larger area at the back and with a large flat area, you can move very, very quickly. Typically with a fast laser, you can do a full back in five minutes. So it's really, really fast. Yeah, that's what I wanted to ask there actually, as you were explaining yeah. a few things. When you said, you know, a person would need maybe typically six treatments 
um, does it depend on what the treatment is, um, how long each treat, sorry, I'm probably confusing you, how long each treatment takes. So like it depends if, if it's like upper lip, underarm, there are different variations, are there? No, general, generally it's not dependent on the area. So okay. every area and every person, you know, most likely they'll need six sessions. But they will see that, you know, what happens is after the treatment, the hairs are dead, but it takes about a week for the hairs to fall out. And then they're hair free for anywhere from four to eight weeks till they come in for the next treatment. And then, you know, the next phase of hair growth grows through and you can in treat that, they fall out a week later, you're hair free for maybe five to nine weeks. So throughout the course, you're pretty much hair free for 90% of it. But you want to wait until the next phase of hair growth has grown through fully before you treat. So you can see oh. here that it's moving pretty fast. Yeah. No, I just mean like for the, say, per treatment. So you come in for your first treatment, your second treatment. Like typically, how long does one treatment take? Is that dependent on? Okay. Y yes, it is. So an upper lip, as you saw, could be a minute. Um, yeah. You know, a back is typically five minutes. Full legs, which is, is quite a large area, is 20 minutes. Uh, some people have full bodies, you know, and that's a really important factor because when you look at the commercial side of it, uh, you know, time is money and prices have come down a lot. So you need a short treatment time to be able to offer competitive prices in the market. But you can, you can look at that. Sure. Yeah, they, they sound very short, actually. Um, you know. Yeah. I mean, all, th these are super fast lasers. So some of the old lasers, like in IPLs or kind of the, the older, uh, you know, do one pulse per second with a small spot size. You know, you could take a full back would take 40 minutes. You know, now mm. we can do it in five. So this yeah. is really transformational and it makes laser hair removal profitable again. And, you know, that's one, that's really one of the key factors is that, you know, with a short treatment time, you can charge competitive prices. And with those competitive prices, people will come to you and you've got the best technology. So you get the best results. They keep coming back and referring. And that's, that's the model that, that we work with in the market right now. Um, okay. So this, just to scare you a little bit, this is what we call perifollicular edema. It looks a lot worse than it is. Usually you don't get this, but if you do, it's great because we've destroyed those follicles. And this is just a, an inflammatory reaction to the explosion within the follicle. It's not uncomfortable and it goes after 24 to 48 hours. Usually you only get this towards the end of the treatment when you're doing high, uh, um, high power treatment. But, you know, this is, you know, normally it's just a mild redness. But uh, here you can see another example of that. You get a little raised bumps like a histamine reaction. So that's a good result and that will go within the next day. So I've got a few other case studies. Uh, this was a lady who had polycystic ovaries. So, you know, extensive, you know, thick, dense, dark hair. And after one treatment, yeah, it's still a little patchy, but a huge improvement. And, you know, for people like this, it's life changing. So yeah. you know, it can be a very satisfactory treatment to offer. And, you know, she will get full clearance, you know, um, over time. But that after one treatment is, is a pretty impressive result. Here you can see on arms before and after. This is three sessions. Very little hair left after three sessions. So, you know, it, it, it gets lighter, finer, less dense as you go through the treatment. Yeah. Here is one that you can see before, one day after. So you can still see a little bit of the periphery inflammation there, which is good. One month after, absolutely no hairs whatsoever. Because uh, on, on body area, that treatment, he wouldn't be ready for another treatment for another month beyond that. So you don't yeah. want you know, two months between treatments. Um, finally, on, I'll, I'll just finish that how hard which links the scientific and the practical side of it. There are some technologies coming out now with triple wavelengths saying, oh, we get, you know, we give you the 7.5, the 810, the 1064, you got everything you need. Well, it's not necessarily the best option in, in, in our view. Um, you know, the 7.5 or 810 are the best wavelengths. 7.5, you can treat light skin types. 810, you can treat all skin types. You want to get peak absorption and maximum penetration. Uh, the 1064 has got a lower melanin absorption, so it's less effective on finer, lighter hairs. Uh, 1064 also requires more power, so you could be more uncomfortable. So it doesn't really make any sense for us to add a 755 
an 810 and a 1064 into one wavelength because you're adding in a 755 that's not appropriate for dark skin types. You're adding in a 1064, which makes it less effective on lighter, finer hairs. So, you know, it, it, sometimes these, these are, are, are from a marketing point of view because, oh, a triple is better than a single, but in our opinion, uh, not. Generally, we go for the 810 diet because you get the best of both worlds, suitable for skin types. It's high power. It's got a short pulse duration. Uh, we do have a triple wavelength, but it's an 8, 10, 9, 40, 10, 64. It's recommended only for treating predominantly skin type 4, 5, and 6. So just to give you a little bit information on that, if people are, are promoting a triple wavelength. Okay, great. Um, I'm just conscious of time there, actually. Um, so, because I wanted to ask you, I guess I wanted to ask you about the Irish market and then explaining how new technology has come into the market and improved the sector. Um, I suppose, yeah, like talking about, you know, has the market been growing in terms of as well, is it something that's more in demand from clients? Um, mm -hmm. And then how the new technology has come into the market and improved everything. Okay, so uh, this is an ad from a, a magazine that I came across recently, so the multi-billion dollar hair market's about to get even bigger. I've been in this for 20 years and every year I say, gosh, we must have peaked now. I mean, how many hairy people are out there? But the reality is every year it gets bigger and bigger, partly driven because prices have come way down from what they used to be. So now it's become affordable to the mass market. And if you look at, uh, there are no data on specific Irish or UK market size. So if you look at the global market for well, laser hair removal last year was 8, uh, 587 million. It's expected to grow by 16% per annum over the next uh, number of years. And by 2026, it'll be worth, you know, it's a multi-billion dollar market hair removal growing very rapidly. You can see here with razors, shaving, laser and waxing, it's still a relatively small part because these are long established, very mm. low cost, uh, easy, you know, easy to do. Very accessible, yeah. Yeah, and they're typically about 10 billion a year and, and laser was under, under a billion last year. So, but the key thing to look at is how things are gonna change in the future. These are the grow, expected annual growth rates with razor, you know, 4% waxing, three and a half, laser's growing at 16%. So it's taking over the, 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 the waxing and the razor market. We won't get rid of it because they're always gonna be around and waxing continues to be popular. But as, as consumers get educated, they're realizing, actually, you know, I don't, you know, I just want to get rid of the hair, you know, permanently, and I want to do it quickly, and I want to avoid the pain and the inconvenience uh, of that. And, you know, trends in the market are driven by technological advances. Devices are becoming much more faster. So, as I said, you know, if you do a full back in five minutes compared to 40, so much more convenient. They're more powerful, you're getting better results. It's now pain free, big, big advantage. And the technology is much, much lower cost. Prices have come way down to almost to a point where it's actually more affordable than waxing. Because if you do treatments very, very quickly, you don't have to charge a lot of money. You just got to focus on what your revenue per hour is. So if you, in the past, if you were doing, you know, full legs at, you know, which would take you, you know, an hour, and you were charging 150 pounds, you know, that's your hourly rate. Now you can do full legs in 20 minutes. If you charge 90 pounds, it becomes a lot more affordable. You could do three of those in an hour, your revenue per hour actually goes up. So even though prices have come down, you, people with old technology that's slow, they can't compete in the market anymore. You know, but if you've got a super fast, you know, powerful device, then your treatment time is very, very short. You can charge low prices, but your revenue per hour is, is you know, two, three hundred pound euros. Um, so we're moving into the mass market, prices reduced, and it's becoming more affordable, more convenient, and more comfortable. And there's a move away from shaving and waxing to laser. Uh, you could almost say it's cheaper than waxing and faster than shaving. Uh, you know, when you take into account the average female spends 17,000 euros on waxing in a lifetime, you know, Course of laser hair removal well, looks you know, mm -hmm. comparatively quite cheap. Um, and so we've been in the Irish market for about two years now, and, and it's been, for us, it's been a very successful market. Um, I think you know, part of it is timing, and part of it is coming in with a technology that's you know, 
and you know, faster, less expensive. But we didn't do so until we had good support on the ground. And so we can, we can provide you know, the training and support that people need to make it a, a, a profitable part of their business. Because yes, it's got to be clinically successful. It's got to give you the results the clients expect. Um, but also it's got to be commercial and you've got, you know, it's a very competitive market out there. There's a lot of machines, a lot of people doing it. You can buy machines from China for $4,000 and, and set up as $4,000. Okay. I mean, they don't work, but you know, and they'll break down in six weeks, but um, yeah. you know, the, the general consumer doesn't know that. And this is what, you know, what you're facing. So part of it is educating the consumer, uh, being able to compete at prices and um, but, but offering uh, you know, good results. Equipment cost and running cost is, is a factor. You know, in the past, machines have been, you know, 50 to 150,000 euros, which is just not affordable for, for most people. Um, you know, our devices, you know, range from, you know, 24 to, to 45,000. And we could do them on leases, for example. So the upfront cost has come down a lot. Uh, with our devices, there are no running costs. So, you know, you're not, you don't have to replace flash lamps. You don't have the high service costs or, you know, so it becomes quite profitable. And you've got high power, high speed, no consumables, no pain. That's what the market wants. You've got to have reliable technology and good after sale support. Uh, you know, th there are many people who will happily sell you a laser and they'll never take a call again. You know, and that's, you know, um, I come across a lot of people who, 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 who make that mistake and are upset. So having that good after sale support, whether it's from a clinical or a marketing point of view, is very important. And 50% of the, the challenge is effective marketing. And that could be quite difficult, you know, if you're running your busy salon and, you know, you're not a marketing expert and it's like, where do you go? So I put a, you know, maybe I'll, I'll find a page but you know a little bit about marketing laser hair removal and you know we could have an entire webinar on this but to give you a little synopsis uh, obviously the, you know, the basics of you know, you've got an existing database doing an introductory offer open events making sure you've got your in-salon marketing materials posted brochures, but you've got people have to know you offer it uh, doing special offers and seasonal events so everybody who walks in your door knows that you offer it and all your staff are, are, are able to promote that. Externally then, you know, you've got offline and online. Um, you know, people still read local newspapers, you know, they want to find out, you know, what the council are doing, who got arrested, all this. And they don't give a great return on investment, but now they're very low cost because papers are desperate for advertising. So you can take a large ad really to give a launch to your campaign at very, very little cost and it's targeting people in your area. So if it doesn't cost a lot and, and it's also targeting a slightly different market of people, you know, they haven't woken up this morning and said, Hey, I want to get some laser hair removal. Yeah. So they go on to Google. This is, they open up the paper. Oh, that looks interesting. God, yeah. do this waxing forever. And this looks so much better. Um, I didn't catch that. And then, Could you try again? Uh, they're not, obviously online is, will give you the best return on investment, you know, uh, having a, a very good website, because that's the window to your world. It's got to be search engine optimized with all the keywords and information that Google likes, you know, some very informative blogs, reviews, adding relevant content regularly, videos and helpful information. And, and the supplier, your company should, you know, provide many of these to, to support you with that. You don't have to do them all yourself. Uh, Google ads in particular is very targeted so you know that's advertising to people who are going online looking for laser hair removal in your area it's a no-brainer why, why would you not do that facebook is a is a is a more of a wider spread in terms of you know trying to increase awareness and and uh, throw the net wider and instagram obviously is becoming more more, more popular and can be less expensive um, but if it's done properly then you can get a very high return on investment from online advertising. Now, this may put some people off because I don't know what a Google ad is, you know, and then you go to an agency and they charge you a lot of money for rent to run the ad, you know. Generally, I've found there are, I'm sure, some good agencies out there. There are a lot of bad agencies who are primarily sales companies who just want to get you onto a monthly payment and they do nothing for you. It's actually quite easy to do these yourself if you learn mm -hmm. a little bit or have somebody in the salon who can do that for you saves you money and also suppliers you know should be able to guide you with this as well because they've got the experience in the market and if you are going for an agency 
they need to know your market. Nobody knows your market better than you. So you need to be heavily involved with that. Uh, last point I make is avoid group on and companies. It's like the death of the business. It's just unprofitable business. I've seen so many companies, you know, clinic salons go, go under because they thought this was great getting thousands of people in. But when you look out, you're not making money on them, you know, and it's clogging up your diary and all the rest. So a few little tips and hints there. Okay, I'd actually forgotten about Groupon myself until the other day I saw it popping up in my spam or something. I forgot yeah. it even existed. <laughs> Still on the go. I know. Yeah, it, it was popular a few years ago because yeah. you know, it's got like a thousand inquiries in a day is oh my, this is fantastic. But you know, you give Groupon fifty percent and then you know you, you, you Yeah. It doesn't make money. Yeah. Um, and Yes. Did you? I think we and I, suppose, I just I, an earlier question I was I was going to ask you was does it appeal like to a certain age group or does it like appeal more to females than males or is it very much mixed? Yeah, it uh, well the stats are that eighty percent of females have some form of hair removal, you know, so that could be shaving, waxing, or laser. So you know, your your, your target market is eighty percent of females. Um, eight, it's a pretty wide age group. Um, obviously, the only hair that we can't treat is white or grey. So, for all the people with grey hair, we just can't remove that. So, uh, but pretty much, you know, everyone, it's a big, big market, and increasingly, the male market is, is is the fastest growing part of the market because guys are having the shoulders, the backs, the chests, uh, you know, necks, you know, removed, um, and it works really, really well on on those as well. So. It's a huge, huge market, um, predominantly female. You know, it's at like, you know, 70, 75% female. Um, but, you know, not to avoid, uh, you know, the male market. And in terms of age groups, uh, generally age restrictions of, of younger age groups are about from your insurance company. Some are 18 plus, some are 16 plus. Um, and it's not from a safety point of view, it's more from, you know, treating children. But, uh, that's uh, you know, 18 above, up to, you, know, you know, all the way up to as long as they've got some pigment in their hair, we can treat. Okay. Mm. And do you find more um, salons um, opt for, do you say is it like the leasing option? Yes. Well, the, actually, at the moment is, is in, you know, the 20 years I've been doing this, the best time to buy a laser, I'm not saying that because we're going to sell them because the government are giving loans out at the moment that are interest free, no repayments for a year. A lot of our clients and, and prospects have been getting those to buy equipment so they can, you know, really drive the business when we can reopen again. To get finance where, you know, it's interest free, no repayments for a year, the laser will pay it off within a period of time if you've got a good machine, a good support and right marketing. Um, the other option obviously is, is leasing and with that you can spread the cost of the machine over three to five years so it becomes affordable monthly payments. Uh, obviously uh, there is interest associated with that so it increases the cost over time but it, it does help your cash flow. You don't have to come up with you know, any money up front. You, know, you could have zero deposit in finance the full amount or you could put some level of deposit down. So um, yeah, it, it's become much more affordable. Okay, and, and you said as well that um the training is provided as part of the service, is it? Yes, it is, yeah. So um, at the moment, we've been doing some online training. Uh, we've got another, another one running next week. It uh, covers a lot of what I've, in more depth than, than what I've covered today. And then we do on-site training. So we'll come and spend a full day with you. Uh, we do you know, uh, cases and make sure that you're an expert on, on using the equipment. And it, you know, it's open then if you need additional training going forward so there's kind of no limit but generally most people in a day they become very competent and then over the next two weeks they get lots of practice and then they can do it without thinking so it's pretty easy to pick up okay and then just lastly um i suppose i'm just even wondering myself you know would you say that anybody that say like a salon is tuned in now and they're thinking about you know branching out into this area is it something that gives them a competitive edge over, you know, other salons to be able to offer that particular service to clients? Yeah, absolutely. Um, laser hair removal is the number one requested non-invasive 
uh, technology you know, or, or treatment in the market right now. So your clients, you know, know about this or increasingly are knowing about it and they're looking for it. And, you know, if you're doing a lot of waxing, you know, you're going to find you're going to start to lose customers uh, who are going to the clinic that does laser. In terms of the impact on, on your business, um, I've seen businesses double their turnover from introducing laser hair removal. And, you know, but the key is it's going back, you know, choosing the right technology, having the right support from the company, getting your marketing really good. If you get all that right, it can, it can you know, hugely increase your, your turnover and, and your profitability. Yeah, and I guess it's, it's probably a pretty big decision, but if you put enough thought into it, it works out very well. I think you, you've got to do, do your research, make yeah. sure you're com comfortable with the, the company you're dealing with, the, the people you're dealing with, that they are going to be there to support you afterwards. Uh, you know, note the inf information on the science that I started. You know, you don't have to be a PhD in physics, but, you know, understand the basics of it because, you know, I hate to say there are companies out there who will tell you what you want to hear just to get you to buy a machine off them. Yeah. And, you know, they've all got the best machine and, you know, they promise <laughs> you the world and, you know, they're not all telling the truth. Uh, so, you know, you, you've got to filter that to an extent. Um, the key thing, what I say is always speak to their customers. We have an open book in terms of our database of customers. If you're looking to buy a machine, we'll give you a list of, you know, as many, you know, 20, 50, 100. You can call them because they'll have been in the same position as you. You know, I'm not unsure, you know, is it, he's, 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 they said this machine's better. You know, these people have, you know, put their trust in us and they've made those decisions. And now they'll tell you about, you know, how the technology, the feedback from their clients, are they happy with the results, you know, is it pain free? Is there no side effects? The impact they've had on the business. That's the best source of referrals you can get. So anyone looking to buy a machine, I would encourage you to call people who've been using it. Yeah. Who have no bias and yeah. they'll give you an, give you an honest answer. Yeah, yeah, they're gonna tell you the truth. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay, listen, thank you so much for joining us and thank you everybody else for joining us. Uh, I hope you've all learned, uh, I know that I've certainly learned an awful lot about laser hair removal stuff that I didn't even know. Um, and yeah, it was really, really great to hear from you and uh, we'll talk to you again soon. Great, okay, thank thanks you, a lot, Peter, Rita. And right. Thank you everybody and we will be back probably at the same time next week with uh, another webinar, probably Thursday at 12, but keep an eye on our social media and uh, we'll give you more information. So until then, bye everybody, talk to you soon. Thank you, bye-bye. Bye, Peter, thanks.